Nancy Cavey. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy, and we've got Dr. Braun. Hi, Nancy. Hey, Thanks how are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want to ask a number of questions today because our viewers are interested in orthopedic issues, primarily shoulder and knee conditions. So tell us, what are the most common degenerative conditions that you'll see of the shoulder and knee? So for degenerative conditions, obviously arthritis is the most common one. But in the shoulder, uh, in particular, we'll see degenerative labral tears. We'll see degenerative rotator cuff tears. Um, you know, there's biceps tendonitis. There's AC arthrosis. There's quite a bit of things that, that we can, uh, go over in, in the knee. Typically, you know, just generalized osteoarthritis, but also degenerative meniscal tears, uh, as well as ligament injuries and things like that. Well, obviously you're an orthopedic surgeon. That's why you're here. Can you tell us what are the most common treatment uh, modalities that you'll see in both the shoulder and the knee? So for every patient, we always start off with conservative treatment. So you know, surgery is the, the last resort option in, in our practice. So exercise is the, the number one thing that we see patients for. It's, it's remarkable how many patients come in and the only problem they're having is that they're not physically fit and they've done something that is out of the ordinary for them and they're sore or they have some pain. And that's the same soreness or pain that somebody who was physically fit would not have if they did those same activities. So quite often we are just prescribing home exercise programs for, for patient, maybe a, a formal exercise program with physical therapy, but that is the number one conservative treatment. But, and then what's the next step in, in treatment? So the, the next step is oral anti-inflammatory medications. If you're able to take them, you know, those are like the ibuprofens, the Motrins, similar medications like that. Ice and heat, stretching, all of those play a role. And the probably, probably the most effective thing we have for acute inflammation or acute pain, we a corticosteroid injection. And where these medications that we're talking about are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, corticosteroid injections are steroid anti-inflammatory medications that we can put right into the source of the pain and problem and hopefully decrease or eliminate it. And is that something you do or do they have to see another No, physician? that's something we do right there during their office visit. Uh, if they come in, you know, we talk about early conservative treatments and, and the non-invasive things. But if their pain is more than four out of 10, then typically we recommend the corticosteroid injection and we provide it right there on site. So at what point in your professional pain and experience does someone become a surgical candidate because of problems with their shoulder? So really the, the number one indication for surgery in my book is failed conservative treatment. So if the oral anti-inflammatory medications, the home exercise programs, the injections are not providing with a significant level of relief, then it's time to move forward with it. So, you know, obviously we, we try to put that off as long as we can, but then for patients that, you know, are 65 years of age or older, we are a little bit more aggressive because then you're starting to reach the other side of that window of opportunity for surgery. And the longer you delay something, the harder it's going to be because you're going to be older, you're not going to be as healthy, you're not going to be as strong. So typically, and especially for knee and, and hip arthritis, once a patient reaches 65, my threshold for moving forward with surgery is very low just because we don't want to put it off until they're 85 or 90. And then it's much more difficult, or maybe they're not even a candidate any longer because of health risks. So. Um Based on a physical exam or MRIs or CT scans, what makes a person surgical from a shoulder stand? So the number one reason is their subjective opinion. So if they say that they are unable to do the things that make them happy, in my book, that makes them a surgical candidate. Usually that is accompanied by radiographic findings, meaning the x-ray shows changes or we see sclerosis or hardening of the bones near the joint. Uh, we see osteophyte formation, which is just the bones actually trying to get bigger to spread out the contact pressure mm -hmm. of, of the joint. You know, there are deformities, there are effusions, which is swelling, or people commonly call it water on the knee. Yeah. 
And that is a direct indication that there is something that is injured that is not healing. So stay away from the knee. What is it about a physical exam or an MRI or their complaints that, in your opinion, makes them a, a good surgical candidate? So when we're talking about knee replacement surgery, again, it is just failure of improvement with the conservative treatments. The things that we see on physical exam are the same things we see in the shoulders. So swelling, crepitus, which is like the creaking sound whenever you know, we move the joint. You know, there, there's pain right along the joint line, and there's certain provocative tests that we do that can indicate the patient's ready for surgery. Right. 